so good afternoon everyone and welcome to 3ds max online training program at scikit center and my name is setu nandanya and i am a autodex certified instructor right in our last class in our yesterday's class we discuss about the lighting effects the basic lighting effects right but today we will see some advanced effect in that light that uh, you will see only in your rendered video right it will not visible on your viewport you must have to render it to check the result so let me begin with our class 3ds max software so here i have shared the 3ds max screen please confirm that it is visible to you all or not okay good and my voice is clear right is there any disturbance in my voice or it is clearly audible okay good so if you have any queries then just immediately inform me okay so now let me begin our today's class with the uh, some other effects in the lights that uh, you might experience so first of all uh, we skip two things yesterday that is projector map and one is atmospheric effect that two things we uh, skipped uh, yesterday so we will begin with that so that are the main things so here we maximize our viewport and let's have a plane over here and a box right here okay then if you want to draw some sketches uh, that you can from the front view type f not front view left view okay i want to draw one uh, spline line and from uh, here to hold your shift key over here then on the bottom like this i want to create this much line uh, one more line so it from here again hold your shift key up to here and on the bottom okay now select your first line convert it into editable spline or just leave it as it is it is fine because we want to uh, spend our time in modeling so here we have two lines just select first line and go to the uh, rendered mode and in the rendering just enable in render and the radius should be one inch let's have a look how it looks like it's quite small so we will increase the radius 2 inch again render it okay now it is fine if you want to add some fillets that we can with this editable spline option just select your vertex and uh, here we have fillet tool where it is yes here so just increase that value as per your requirement now select the other one same uh, we will select the vertexes and select this one and increase the fillet value so these are just for the uh, some objects we have selected in the rendered output and let's say 4 inch thickness we need a radial one again shift q we have this type of output or uh, we should take uh, equal amount for the both 
so let me go with the 3 inch for this one and 3 inch for this one okay now select this both and translate it up to this wall so view it from this side of you and uh, you should place it like this it is fine so for example this is our model go to the perspective view and now we are going to place our light so from here i am placing one light which is a spotlight so here we have a spotlight we are choosing a free spotlight press w take it up and rotate it in this side for example this is my uh, point of view i want to place my light like this okay and now render it so your result will be just set your camera view properly and if it is possible if you feel that this uh, room is small enough then you can increase it okay but for now it is um, quite enough so here we have this output uh, but we are not able to see the rest of the thing over here because there is, uh, as i told you that when we place our own light the light of the software light of the 3ds max is going to disable right so what we are doing over here let's have uh, one more plane so go to the front view and here i am creating one more plane like this okay and just uh, orbit your model okay now press w take it in this side and in this side okay and take a copy also so hold your shift key and copy it and uh, say okay now let me rotate it r e in this 90 degree then we will place this thing at the back side now see here we have some problems in your model as you see that uh, our light is actually passing throughout this object right let me place one omni light over here so we have uh, even lighting effect so you will notice that this spotlight is actually passing from this object to the next object why this thing happens so that is due to our shadow cast so you need to select your object or select your light go to the modification and make sure you turn on this shadows when you are going to turn on that shadow that effect will be removed and also just select it turn on that shadow and now see we our light stops over here it is not going further right if this is disabled it will go throughout so that's the first thing you have to make sure that you have a shadow on and with the proper shadow engine and make sure that you are working in the scan line mode so your render mode in the f10 render setup is should be scan line render okay so these are the settings that you need to focus now for this light see actually this light is lighting from here right but we are getting the lighting effect on this back face also see on this side also on the background so that is due to our shadow cast if you turn on this shadows 
then you will not experience any lighting effect over here right so we have shadows now see we have proper shadow effect okay so these are the initial settings that i want to tell you now let me go to our camera view and i am going to delete this omni light okay we have one more light that is our sky light so if you place your sky light over here it will give you a even lighting effect on each and every side so just click on sky light and place it anywhere on your model so this light will provide you a even lighting effect on all the faces so view it from the back we have a lighting effect over here just select it go to the edit and we do not have that uh, shadow cast option cast shadow but still we have this lighting effect uh, we have even lighting effect right so light skylight we have right so it will create a even lighting effect in your entire portion either it is from inside or outside so that's our skylight so you can set this level to minimum for example 0 0.2 so this is the multiplier for that so we will not experience a completely black geometry over here right we have some amount of lighting effect at all the faces right now let me uh, begin with the or if you want to apply some materials a uh, different materials then you can but it is fine for now just let me apply some colors okay now type c for your camera view and here we have our light so we will focus on this light and if these lights are not selectable in your uh, 3ds max if you find any kind of difficulty to select this light we have a light lister also that you will find from the tools here we have light lister click on that and you will get a list of all the lights that we have in our screen for example i want to select this omni 2 so select it and close that so that light will be selected wherever it is it is over here so let me delete it so by mistake it was there right again go to the tools go to the light lister and now we have two light one is this free spotlight and one is the skylight for example i want to select skylight so click on this box and close this one so it is selected and you have this modify panel again let me delete this now we will discuss about the projector mapping so for that uh, we enter in camera view select this light and in the uh, spotlight parameter not in spotlight parameter in the advanced effect here we have a projector map option so if you are choosing any black and white image that means your alpha image that image will reflect directly for example we choose this smoke effect right click on ok now when you render this scene you will get that smoke effect on your light right so this one is a very helpful tool in our uh, rendered output why it is because say for example this is our uh, screen and shift q so we get this type of output instead of full light so that is a projector mapping in the projector mapping exactly what will happen 
for example you have that x-ray film a black and white film and you just put that film in front of your light so what will happen it will create a projection of that image in the theater we use a projector camera or projector over here so what is the exactly projector so we have one transparent film in front of our light source so that light source pass from that image and create that type of uh, lighting effect on the um, uh, in front of us right so that we have so this you can use for any kind of image for example let me show you how to use that with the different images so here uh, I am sharing you uh, my Chrome browser so just go to the Google right and search black and white tree so these images are known as alpha image for example I want this tree pattern so just click on that it will open right so here we have that image so what I am doing I am just going to download this so right click click on the save image and I am going to save that on the desktop with a some small name let's say one okay so here we have downloaded that image now for example next I want uh, this one or you can choose anyone but make sure it should be in black and white color this one is also fine but we have some uh, background over here so that might create some problem let me save this file also number two on desktop and this one also save number three okay so here I have show you which type of image you should prefer right now go to the 3ds max and here I am selecting my light so go to the tools go to the light lister and select your light and now go to the projector map and go to the bitmap with the bitmap we can choose our image from the computer right so we place that on the desktop here we have let me choose this one click on open now you need to render this thing so shift Q and here we have rendered output now we have one problem over here that this image is actually tilted right flipped so what we need to do we need to uh, rotate that image and again save it so if you have any image editor then you can use that or let me try to edit it with our materials so what I am doing here we have a material editor and just dragging this map to this material with the instant copy say ok so it is uh, like uh, straight in front of us so why we are getting this type of output maybe our light source is not straight so let me try to rotate our light
or let me do one thing just uh, take a new light with the target so here we will place a spotlight targeted spotlight like this this is my target right so we have a straight uh, light over here right click select target take your target a bit up go to the uh, modification of your light turn on this shadows and go to the advanced effects and in the map let me call that image this one open now render it and yes here we have a straight output right so our image was uh, straight but that light was rotated that is why now uh, if you want to uh, scale this thing down or scale this thing up and also we have that facility for example i want a uh, only portion of this tree so what we need to do we need to scale this image and for that we need to work with the materials so type m and here i am calling that uh, material from the light source so select your light source tools light lister select it and uh, here uh, this is my map so i am dragging this map and dropping it in my slate material editor okay then click on ok and here we have that light source and now we will do a tiling over here i want to tile it 0 0.5 0 0.5 in x and y so what will happen this image is actually going to scale up right and now again transfer this thing back to this one from here to here click instance ok so we actually transfer this map back to this one now let me check our render you see we have scaled up that image so it is clear now so this is one type of image one type of material you if you have to do if you want to do any kind of editing with that so go to the material editor first and then you can edit it over there so this is our projector map right and this thing is very useful uh, to uh, reduce your file size for example if you want a uh, just shadow in your image uh, that tree is not necessary over there so you can use this method right uh, it will actually reduce your file size again i am showing you how to import so click on your projector map go to the bitmap click ok and from your computer let me bring this one click open It is not JPG, PNG. So it might have some problem with the opening. Okay, it is loaded. Let's have a look. Nothing. Right? So uh, we might have some problem with that image. So what we need to do, we need to uh, convert that image into JPG format. Okay? Because it's in a PNG format, that's why we have some. Uh, problem with that uh, image but you got the exact idea right so download your black and white image make sure your image is in uh, 
jpg format let me load that back and render it now if you want more realistic effect just place one over skylight over here on your window and make sure that you have a minimum lighting effect of that skylight and check it so the rest of the things are also visible like moonlight it will behave and our image will properly in front of you see how much load it is taking when we just add a skylight but i think the effect of skylight is too much so let me reduce it more 0 0.05 and then render it okay now it is fine so we have a very dim light and here we have our projector so it is clear now about this projector mapping thing Hello students, am I audible? Okay, good. So just try this thing yourself, okay? In your image. See, if you place your light source far away, then you will get that much bigger result. So it depends on your uh, position of your light source. So it is clear now. So I am going to cancel it. Now the next thing is uh, lens effect. So for the lens effect, uh, let me delete this light and also that uh, skylight that we have that we won't need now. And let me create one box. A small box we have. From the front view place it right here and at some height ok 
okay now we will create one uh, omni light and just place it just below that object from the front view make sure both the things are at the same position this should be at center and this also should be at on the top right so this is our arrangement and let me place our camera like this okay now hit shift q and we have this output right in the render now what we will do just select your light turn on this shadow and then render it so now we have shadows shadow of this object also so let me work in multi window so from this view this light should be a little bit out like this okay now it is fine right so now just select your light go to the f10 render setup Now go to the atmospheric effect and click on add and turn this lens effect into it. Uh, how to take camera on screen? Just type control C. Right? Control C is the short key for that. And I will show you in detail. Everything I will show you in detail. Just uh, and that uh, camera placement and camera animation is our in our next class so if you haven't placed that camera then you can render it also i have placed that camera because uh, we want a particular scene over here that is why okay so it is not necessary to place camera for now you can work directly and we will discuss camera placement also camera animation in our next class So uh, just select that light and we just added this lens effect over here right now this effect will create some kind of effect over here but we have so many effects in the lens right now it is just a little glowing over here right nothing else okay go to the tools light lister select your light and click on lens effect and click on the setup and it will give you a environments and effect dialog box now see for the short key for this environments and effect is 8 you have numeric keyboard on the alphabetic 
1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and then press 8 8 is the short key for environments and effect now we need this render window and we need this environments and effect right so the rest of the thing is fine right now just go to the effects and here we have our lens click on that lens and here we have lens effect and first we have glow so you'll see each of these effects step by step so first click on glow edit and click on render uh, if you notice we have a small glowing effect over here but not that much so just select your glow and go to the glow element options over here now the size of your glow intensity of your glow you need to uh, change this parameter and you need to render it every time Is this same lens effect? We are not getting that effect just a minute let me reduce this and then take a ring no this is not the same thing That's not cool. <sighs> Let me take a look from this angle. Okay. So here we have glow. Uh, this camera is too close, that is why. Let me set our screen first properly.
just a minute i am doing some settings over here I think this is fine enough okay so this effect is known as glowing effect right now see what is this turn off go to the atmosphere ink and effects now click on your parameters first glow and these are the parameters of your lens effect globes right so as you increase that so your lens effect globe will going to increase right so the area of your lens effect is going to increase now this is our glow so i want to decrease the size of my glow click on render so here we have smaller glow and also i want to decrease the intensity it is too bright for me so let me take uh, around 25 render it so we have a nice smooth glow over here so these are the parameters that just you um, work with that right and change it and find your suitable solution so this is our first option glow whenever you we see from uh, any glasses right when we wearing uh, sunglasses or any other glasses and we look at uh, the lights then we um, experience this type of effects over there in the camera video recording also this type of effects around the light you will ex uh, notice that right and the color of that you will uh, have color main color is white and the rest color we have a red over here if you want to change it that i want yellow color then you will get that type of globe right the main color also you can change it for example you have a bluish light then set it to the blue and your center uh, globe will be blue color right so this is the glowing effect then next we have is the ring so let me remove this glow now and take this ring and click on render so this ring we have now it is a quite big ring so first of all go to the ring parameter and decrease the size and 25 okay it is quite big still so 5 enter okay now the intensity of this ring is also too high so let me decrease that intensity around 15 so we have a nice smooth ring over here also I want glow at the center so turn on this glow select that glow and render it so we have glow and that ring both at a time see but the glow is too high so let me decrease that intensity of glow and uh, also if you want to reduce the globe or the size of your glow then you can so we can uh, add two or more effects at a time but all the things you need to check in your rendered output okay so set your render output f10 to the minimum as we discuss right the custom this much size we have turn on this two sided option so that are the necessary changes we have and make sure you are in scan line render mode in other render mode this uh, lens effect and volume effect will want work okay so now let me remove this both and next we have ray so let's have a look what we have in the ray so these are the rays you can take two or three effects also 
now the number of rays are over here is too high so the size of ray let me decrease it to 100 okay it is fine now the number 50 we have too many rays still let me take 25 okay it is enough now sharpness uh, maximum you can enter 10 and minimum 0 right so let me go with the 10 so we have a very sharp arrow like we have as very clean lines if you want a dull result then you can uh, reduce this sharpness and your this line are blur line right so that's we have then intensity obviously we will take a less intensity over here right because the, if we have a high intensity then the effect will looks artificial so it must be looks a uh, realistic in your image so these are the rays parameter we have then uh, also we have ray color so here let's have a blue color so we have that type of effect then next we have a auto secondary option so let me take this one there is also a very good option click on render and you will get this type of rainbow rings right in your scene but uh, this is um, quite big rings we have so go to the auto secondary and uh, First of all, let me reduce the parameter. Okay, it is fine. Just minimum and maximum size. Minimum, let's say 1 and maximum, let's say 5. Now render it. So we have, uh, still we have a big one. So minimum 0 0.2 and maximum 1. Now render it. Okay, so these stars are now fine. The axis, uh, let's say uh, three or four axis we want. So at that much, it will distribute that much distance. Uh, if we take one, then it is close enough, right? So let me go with the two. This is fine. Now, if you want to change change the angle, also we have that uh, facility. Here we have intensity, then color source and occlusion. Quantity is 12 over here. If you decrease the quantity, that much element will be there. Okay. And if you increase your quantity, so that much element will be there. Now we have this star shape over here. If you want a circular, then you will get a circular one like this rings we have then uh, also we have triangles and uh, four five sides also we have pentagons right so these are the options we have up to eight and here we have rainbow effect so right now whatever we are getting with the multicolor these are the rings with the multicolor if we increase the intensity decrease the quantity and increase the intensity and render it so you will notice that we have a multicolor over here mm. okay now if you choose single color that I want blue rings circular then you will get only blue disc type rings over there if you choose brown circle then you will get only that type of brown effect 
right so these are the options we have green circle then we have green a rainbow option also like this right so depends on your atmosphere which type of atmosphere you want to create so you can choose uh, that type of values see so clear it is then uh, this is the auto secondary when all the bubbles are come uh, randomly right but if you want to place these single single bubbles manually then we have a manual secondary turn on this manual secondary and render it we have only one ring over here right now for this let me set the size and all so size should be 20 this is quite big two okay now plane so this distance is from our light source right so let's say 100 so it will be closer to my light source right if we increase this uh, let's say 300 then it will be uh, that much far away from our light source so this should be 250 mm so here we have one now go to the again manual secondary again add it so this second one render it so this we have the second ring that we want with the size of 1.5 and at the position of 170 right and also with the brown color so in this way you can uh, set your manual disk right at the positions and you can create a combination of all these uh, options so you can enter uh, add as many options as you want right i want to again add one more manual secondary you can right so as many uh, you want you can add now let me remove all these and uh, this is our regular result then next we have star so in the star we have this type of output uh, first of all let me change the parameters so the size of star should be 100 okay it is now enough the width should be 1 okay fine the quantity should be 5 if you want to rotate we have facility over here that I want to rotate it 30 degree see the position of star is changed and if you want to create a small animation with that right also you can see uh, for that turn on your auto key take to the next position and change your angle to the 120 degree right so this is our animation that we will get only in rendered output so for that we need to create a video Are you getting me or we should render it hello students 
it is clear up to this point or do you have any question okay and the last lens effect we have that is stick which is also a very useful whenever you create a street light or anything else and this stick will be a very helpful because it is a very simple and very uh, unique option we have that generally we experience whenever we see towards the light this type of uh, rays you will get right but uh, we need to set that first size is fine width is too much 0 0.8 and the taper should be 0 0.7 angle should be at uh, 60 degree like this or on the other side so minus 60 degree right so whenever you are rendering your scene your camera is moving you can provide some effect on this tag also just change a angle little bit so that will capture in your animation take it sharp so now let me add two or three options over here and here we have everything at a time right so stack which is fine glow size of glow 3 intensity of glow 20 uh, size increase it okay now the ring let me change it with the some other color then ring first of all reduce the size then intensity and color size we need to reduce more and the thickness increase it intensity decrease it more okay and the last race so first of all number of counts take 25 intensity only 5 sharpness complete here we have this output with our light it is clear now so now you have lots of work right if you just want to place a single light then you need to work around one or two hours for just the placement of that single light we have so many settings in the light right so it is clear now uh, do you have any question regarding this lens effect
all are quiet hello okay one answer from mukesh so completely understood uh, this uh, lens effect now good so you have to try this thing also in your assignment okay anywhere you can place in your bungalow you can place anywhere on the street light also on the room light also but make sure that that effect looks realistic right okay and now next we have a last effect in our lighting that is a volume effect so in the volume effect we actually create we need to create uh, something over here select this and uh, turn on the edges okay now just a minute okay i am just creating some modeling work over here So right click convert it into editable poly and selecting this edge and we have some problem with the selection Polygon is selectable, but we have a problem with the edge selection. So select these two edges, click on the connect, and uh, we have two with a narrow gap, and over here. Okay, now again connect it. A large gap and it should be here okay now with the polygons where is the polygon this one i'm selecting i'm finding some difficulty while selection see Let me go to the top view. Why it is selecting away?
I think we need to restart this software now. Okay. Borders. Hold your shift key. Okay, control plus. Hold your shift key and take it down. Okay. So this type of uh, opening we have on the bottom. And let me place one light below this uh, grid. Okay. So our camera view is also proper. We have a proper placement over here. nice now see I am creating one spotlight free spotlight you can use direct light also okay so whatever your requirement you can use that I am using a spotlight placing it over here from this uh, front view I think we should save this file and reopen this max why rays are not evenly distributed uh, because that's a rays pattern it will distribute randomly if you want evenly distributed rays then go with the next option that we have see uh, in the 8 number effects lens effect and you should go with the star in the star you will get a even uh, evenly distributed object in the rays we have randomly distributed object right so we have two things star and uh, rays so in the star you can also decide how many counts you want we uh, lastly we use five count right so we have that uh, five rays from the light. What's your name? Mohit so I think you got your answer so let me take this light upside down 180 degree like this and uh, going to move that just below that uh, we have over here okay I think light placement is proper from this view we should take a little below And also let we set the con size 
to go to the modify here we have spot parameter and hotspot and follow up this become suddenly zero Okay, now go to your camera view and render it. We have only this much thing, right? Okay, now select your light, go to the uh, atmospheric and effects, and add a volume effect over here. Okay, and then render it again. So we have this type of uh, light beam right that you are discussing that sir uh, we are not able to see that light beam so here we have this light beam but we need to do so many settings over here first of all uh, the camera setting let's we set our camera properly So we have a maximum output with the volume. Okay, I think it is fine. So camera setting is done. Now the light setting. So select your light. And first of all turn on this shadow. See we are not actually getting this type of net effect in this volume right we have an even circular volume over here so what we need to do we need to turn on this shadow then render it shadow map yes so as i told you we must have a proper shadow map engine right and uh, yes one more thing actually we have this circular disk over here so that's due to our modeling so we need to model a bottom face also right but uh, it will consume so much time so let me continue now and also intensity if your intensity is fine enough then it is okay if you want to re reduce the intensity just set it first and this becomes again okay so i think this is fine and make sure in your shadow parameter we have this two sided option on then render it okay now go to the render setup and make sure that this force two sided is also on now everything is fine right all the parameters is fine and uh, nothing is visible over here so we will add one uh, skylight with 0 0.05 intensity uh, let me reduce it more 0 0.01 okay 
so now it is clear now this effect is actually going throughout so let me um, limit that thing up to this point okay so what i am doing i am setting that uh, near attenuation and far attenuation select your light and in the intensity and attenuation just set your far attenuation the starting should be right here and ending should be right here now let me check we have up to this point result right let me increase it more because we have some space okay now let me discuss the parameter of this volume effect so for that again where we need to go we need to go to the eight number atmospherics and effects or you can click on the setup also right click on this setup select your volume light and click on the setup and here we have atmospherics and effects option where in the atmospheric effect we have volume effect so select that volume effect and at the bottom here we have all the parameters so first of all we have density let me change it and check the result now see the density of this volume is decreased right so it is fine for now five then the maximum light and minimum light so maximum light is 90 percent and minimum light is zero percent let me set maximum line 50 so that not the uh, much more for us and uh, then we have a attenuation multiplier actually we have attenuation color over here so turn on this use attenuation color so you will get that effect on the top right where it is going to end so this blue color but the effect multiplier over here we have let me multiply it by 10 so you will get the exact idea that on the top we have this let me change this color to yellow okay and render it right so not this much this is just i have increased to show you that the effect is over here but use 2.5 1.5 this much is enough right and also your color as per your theme whatever theme you have around your material your model geometry so everything will depend on that right similarly over here you need a little gray color because uh, we are creating a smoky atmosphere so you can use a little gray color also then next we have attenuation setting so it should start from 100 percent and also 100 percent so this is just about this yellow light setting right on the top but just use this multiplier that's enough don't worry about the starting and ending and all then at the end we have a noise over here so if you turn on this noise so we have regular then what with this one fractal turbulence and invert these are the options we have so this is the regular effect but uh, the size is i think uh, we need to set So let me increase the size decrease that size
they are not having that noisy effect over here okay sorry 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 see uh, the first option that we haven't uh, used that is amount it is zero that is why we are not getting any effect so in the rectangular let me increase this amount to one so then you will get the effect so see this is the regular uh, pattern we have decrease this size okay let me decrease it more low should be zero and one should be high so this is a regular pattern we have so this type of foggy atmosphere if you want then you can use this one also we have uh, phase changing parameter so if you want to create a video you can change your face and also we have wind from the front back left right top bottom right so if you want to show that wind is coming from the bottom and the strength of your wind should be this much so it will create a animation let me take a little big size right okay now the next one is this one and we have something different pattern over there and in the turbulence we have a smoke effect uh, level 2 level 1 okay and size should be 5 okay now it is fine so these are the three patterns we have this one is the uh, three different effects we have in our uh, volume light and at the end let me create one video here we have invert result if you turn on invert your black will be white and white will be black right so if you turn on this invert so whatever option for portion you have in black over here if you turn this invert on that black will become a uh, white and whatever white you have will become a black so your result will be inverted what if we increase this level okay so that's it now let me create one video with this so turn on your auto key and we'll create a video for 30 frames or 60 frames right and let me change the phase not the phase first of all just turn off that thing 
and provide some wind value over here from the bottom or from the left or right and then it is fine now turn on this auto key and let me go with the 60 frames and change your phase around 20 times while this so in this two second we have this uh, change in phase and turn off and now go to your render setup F10 and choose a range from 0 to 60 frames right and uh, the rest of the thing is fine and save your file on the desktop with a name and format is AVI save uncompressed ok and render it so we will get one video right so that's it for the today for the lighting purpose I hope you all get some new ideas now if you have any question then you can ask me regarding this lighting effects Hello students. So finally today you get something new to learn or these are just you already know it's a new thing for you or not okay so just try this all things yourself right and uh, let have a look to our output so here we have our video see the it's a little fast so we need to reduce that wind effect and also phase changing effect right or either just apply any one either wind or phase changing we have this type of effect in our volume light It is visible.
ओके सो यस दैट्स इट फॉर टुडे एंड नाउ टुमोरो वी हैव अवर लास्ट क्लास वेर एक्चुअली वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट दी कैमरा प्लेसमेंट कैमरा सेटिंग्स एंड ऑल्सो दी सम एनिमेशन दैट वी जनरली परफॉर्म विद दी कैमेरा राइट Okay. So see you then tomorrow.